so the other day I decided I wanted to paint a cute envelope in order to illustrate the happy mail tears I just created for my Patreons, which is about sending watercolor prints and sticker sheets made from my watercolors, yes, to people. Ooh, this is so exciting. But yes, back to the point. So I realized the envelope could be the perfect subject for the new format of watercolor tutorials I planned to offer you for a while. So the idea is to paint together really simple subjects uh, so that the step-by-step -step process is really straightforward and really easy to follow but allowing you of course to create a wonderful piece at the end. We'll talk about how to paint shadows and uh, which kind of color to use to paint a white subject and more. <laughs> so let's jump into this paint with me, grab your paints, your brushes and your sketchbook or just a piece of paper and let's go, let's paint together. Thank you for tuning in and following the white rabbit of creativity with me. <laughs> Welcome to the tutorial. Let's share a few info about the materials first. If you want to use the same paper as me, I am painting on the Fabriano Artistico Code Press. So now choose your color. So we're going to paint with only four colors. I chose uh, two warm colors and one cool in order to get a nice hue balance even on this uh, white subject. So I didn't want uh, to have only uh, kind of a bluish or grayish shadows because I thought oh the uh, painting uh, will look really cool and a bit uh, like a sad mood. So uh, rather than that, the one I am using are uh, the Sennelier Yellow Light, really nice. Uh, creamy uh, cool yellow and uh, transparent orange by Schmink then I am using uh, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith nice uh, separating a uh, dark uh, purple hue and for the little heart I am using this uh, red color by Sennelier as well which is called Rose Dore Madder Lake of course pick whatever similar color you are in your palette to paint I'm going to start with the yellow and orange colors to get a bit of a soft shadow feeling and then I will use Moon Glow my cooler color to strengthen the shadow you know where they are a bit stronger like in here aside the edges for the brush pick a not too small a natural hair brush brush uh, if you have uh, one. The one I am using is a pointed round by Winsor & Newton. That's a red sable brush size 7. Let's start by doing just a few guidelines so you can just uh, try to get the proportion right uh, that way or you could uh, use a bit of uh, an envelope to be sure uh, you have the right proportion in the case uh, this makes you a bit uh, stressed out. So of course uh, once you have the right proportion try to get your line right. In doubt that's better to have a bit of a curve uh, like this uh, rather than the other side. It will look better and then a bit of uh, this uh, triangle shape. Then step three is looking, observing. So important. Just take a few seconds to think about how the light is casting on the subject, whether you have it in front of your eyes or you try to paint it from your imagination. For example, in here, we have uh, this triangular part casting a shadow on the letter. It can be soft or harsh depending on the light. And then you have the main envelope, the rectangle, casting a shadow on the table. So that's what we're going to use to depict our subject. And now the stage you are all expecting painting for real! Ooh. As a step one, let's start painting the triangular piece of paper shadow with three of our colors. So let's just start by wetting the brush and picking a bit of yellow. In here I didn't have enough water. Be sure it creates a bit of a puddle of water in order to have it really nice. And we use alongside some yellow and also some orange in order to create warm color variations. After cleaning your brush, you soften the edges so that you create only the edge at the top. 
in here. Try not to touch uh, the edges of the envelope because it uh, could uh, get messy uh, on the following. So depending on your paper, the size of your sketch, maybe you will have a bit more colors in the whole uh, envelope or maybe just more focused uh, at the top. It can be also your choice, of course. And not having it too bright but uh, still cheerful and softening it but without touching the edges all around. Then you pick your cool color in here for me the moon glow and woohoo you uh, strengthen the shadow at the top and wet paper so you don't want to you know to wait too long so that it's still wet when you add it and you can try to get more pure pigment in here at the top depending on your liking and the strength of the shadow that you want. Look at these beautiful color variations in here. You can tell that while the paper is drying I can keep uh, adding a bit of uh, the shadows to give volume to the subject. And I'm going to do a little fun thing in here just so that the cool color is not focused only at the top. Look at that, it's so pretty! Now let's do a bit of the same all around the envelope in order to create the shadow casted by the envelope on uh, the background. So let's do a bit of the same and putting some yellow here and there. You know, you can uh, have it in several areas like that if you don't want to clean your brush all the time to change from the yellow to the orange and then picking a bit of the other colors in order to get the variations, mixing both colors together and then you start to soften the edges on the outside by cleaning your brush regularly. I could use a bigger brush uh, to clean the edges and here I chose to use only one brush to simplify my tutorial and demo. In here I can add a bit more orange. You can tell that of course uh, with watercolor the colors oh, I don't want to wait too long to soften in here. Uh, the colors are drying a bit you know, lighter and duller so I <laughs> get a bit crazy and uh, allow myself uh, to have uh, nice bright colors even on this uh, white subject and you can tell in here that uh, because I put quite a lot of water in here the water is pushing a bit of the moon glow I put and it creates a really lovely background this is a kind of thing I really like in my loose watercolor approach and you know we saw that in here the shadow can be pretty harsh depending on the light so if it creates a bit of a line uh, it can be really nice to depict the subject so now like I did earlier I am going to add my cool color just to reinforce the shadow uh, it's called the contact shadow you know just the shadow that uh, creates a bit of a line between a subject and uh, the background here we are and so once again you can choose the effect in here because I am using more water it's a fuse more you can have it not everywhere you know I am just putting a few touches but in here for example there is no moon glow and if you think uh, uh, the shadow is a bit uh, too light because it's uh, softened by the water already on the paper because in here we are working well in wet you can you know keep adding it uh, in here I can just add a few touches and uh, that's it. And so now before painting the little heart red, there is one more shadow I want to create which would be uh, the shadow that would create this kind of sticker or something on the top of the envelope. So let's uh, use the same process, uh, maybe with not too much color and water because it's a smaller area. And now 
that better to wait uh, for the these shadows all around uh, to be a bit drier before painting the little heart. So just a few minutes and we will be able to finish uh, this uh, watercolor study. <laughs> okay almost uh, right away so for the little heart I suggest that we could uh, wet it first uh, to work also wetting weight uh, inside but uh, without uh, going too much outside the lines and then I am picking my creamy red color in here with just slightly bits of uh, water and I want to create a bit of an highlight effect on the little heart so I will keep it a bit uh, lighter on this uh, area so that's why I am kind of uh, uh, painting all around this area that I want to keep lighter and putting the color everywhere else here I added a bit of water just to have it in here more subtle. In the case the red invades your highlight a bit too much, you can just wipe it sometimes a bit with the finger. This can work really like a charm. And then I reinforce the red paint with really strong paint, especially around uh, along the edges of this little house to have really nice, you know, strong, bright red. Look at that, how yummy, juicy it is. And here we are, we just painted an envelope studio within a few minutes with really nice gorgeous colors watery effect uh, everything we like look at that how the heart has a little volume and how the envelope stand out on the paper so depending on your taste you could be just uh, slightly more reasonable with the hue you know the strength of the colors and the effect uh, all around that uh, will also depend of which paper you use but as for me i think this is crazy beautiful I hope you like it as well. The one I painted the other day was a bit softer in the rendering, so this can give you an example of what uh, you could get depending on your paper and the strength of the paint you are putting, the amount of water and everything. But the main thing is have fun! Feel free to check the Happy Mail and the Creative Bundle gifts uh, offers on my uh, Patreon. I'm really excited to create prints from my watercolor and sticker sheets to send you uh, at home, even you know in lockdown and everything. It's so enjoyable to be able to uh, get uh, something inspiring in the mail even when we are not able to shop anything. I don't have an online shop uh, now so this is a bit of the way uh, that you can get uh, things from me as a physical good. So I'm very excited about it and I hope you will as well. I also uploaded a longer real-time uh, demo of me painting a bunch of flowers with a flat brush so feel free to check it if you're interested in having more creative content and following the white rabbit even deeper in the depth of uh, this uh, creative rabbit hole. Have a wonderful nice creative day and happy painting! And please don't forget to tag me if you share your piece on uh, social media. We'd be so happy and so proud to see your work after my tutorial. See you!